Hello friends, welcome to the next session. Having understood what is Moon machine, let's straight away dive into understanding what is Milli machine now. So now, if you look at Milli machine, it is a finite automata with no final state. Of course, I already told you and it is going to produce an output sequence. Now what is the catch is in the second line. In Milli machine, the output symbol is associated with each transition. How is it different from Moore machine? Moore machine was saying the output is associated with each of the state. Here it says the output is associated with each transition. What I mean by that? I'll make it clear in the example. Let's go to the mathematical representation now. Now, a Milli machine is mathematically represented in the same manner as that of the Moore machine. So I say M is going to be is equal to Q summation delta del lambda and q0 since majority of the things are same over here i'm not going to rewrite it again they are going to be exactly same as that of the previous video so if you observe over here i say where q is going to be my finite set of states remains the same going ahead summation is going to be my input alphabet that too remains the same Going ahead, I have my delta. Delta is my output alphabet and the definition and the explanation of that too remains the same. Going to the next part, I have my del and del is called as the transition function. Now, frankly speaking, transition function also remains the same. But since it is important, I am writing it. It says given a state and an input symbol, what is the next state? The last thing which is important after this is my lambda which was called as the output mapping this is going to be different from the Moore machine so i say my lambda which is my output mapping is represented as lambda given a state and an input symbol what is the output what was Moore machine doing over here q directly giving delta over here q is not giving delta directly q is saying depending upon what input i receive let's say the input alphabet is a b so depending on what input i receive i'll be giving the output so if i receive input a i am going to give some output if i receive input b i am giving to give some output and both the outputs may be same or may be different so since they can be different, the output is associated with each transition and not each state. Whereas in Moore machine, it was guaranteed that the state was storing the output. Going ahead to the last part, my Q0. My Q0 is the start state, so that also remains the same. And I say Q0 belongs to Q. Now let's proceed to the example to understand the working of the Milli machine. So now we have... Let us assume we have QA as a state, we have QB as a state and we have QC as a state. This is the start state and there is no final state. Second important thing you observed over here that there is no slash beside the state's name because the output is not associated with the state, it is associated with the transitions. So whatever outputs are going to be written, they ideally will be written on the edges that is on the arrows. So I say over here, let me write input 0 followed by a slash output A. Similarly, I say over here to here input 1 followed by a slash output C. So on and so forth, I write 0 slash C over here, 1 slash B over here, 0 slash A over here. 1 slash a over here so that completes the diagram now let us understand the working of the diagram what i say over here is let us say we are analyzing qa on receiving the input symbol 0 how i read it i say qa on receiving the input symbol 0 goes to qa and throws output a previously we were considering the output first now we are not giving it so much importance so I say QA on 0 
goes to QA and throws output A. Similarly, QA on 1 goes to QB and throws output C. Let me show you some other examples. QC on 1 goes to QA and throws output A. QC on 0 goes to QB and throws output A. That's how you read a milli machine. So let's go ahead with the mathematical representation. We all know we represent it is mathematically as m is equal to q summation delta del lambda q0. So I have over here my q as qa, qb and qc respectively. I have my input alphabets. Now what are the input alphabets? whatever we observe on edges but on edges over here we are observing two alphabets something slash something whatever is to the left of the slash will be my input alphabet whatever is to the right of the slash will be my output alphabets so input alphabets over here from my observations are merely 0 and 1 similarly the output alphabets over here are small a small b and small c respectively having understood that let us straight away jump to Q0. So Q0 is my start state represented by QA. Now moving on to the transition functions, the heart of the milli machine. So now the transition function is defined as del Q cross summation gives you Q. So let's draw it quickly. Q cross summation, I have my state QA. <coughs> QB and QC respectively. Let me draw the table. The input symbols are simply 0 and 1. Completing it, I have QA on 0. Okay, we'll fill it later. Let's draw also the output mapping so that we can fill both the tables simultaneously. So understanding becomes simpler. So I see the output mapping over here was given a state and an input symbol. What is the output that is delta so the table is going to look exactly same previously what we had it was associated with state therefore we did not have a table rather it was a single column now it is going to be exactly the same table so i say q cross summation sketching it in the same manner i have my qa over here i have my qb over here and i have my qc over here and what final state are we having of course, no final state because we are talking of automatas which are going to give only outputs and no final states. So now, let us start filling it from the diagram. If you look at the diagram, I say QA on receiving input symbol 0 goes to QA. So I say QA on receiving input symbol 0 goes to QA so I write it is going to go to QA and the output thrown is small a. Similarly QA on receiving input symbol 1 goes to QB and throws output C. So you can see over here that with state QA the output associated on 0 is A and 1 is C. Both are different which was exactly the opposite in case of Moore machine where it had a single output associated be it any transition. Similarly, if I go ahead, QB on 0, I see that it's going to go to QB only and the output thrown is C. Similarly, QB on 1, I see that it is going to go to QC and the output thrown is B. Last two entries, I have QC on 0. QC on 0 goes to QB. Output thrown is A. And QC on 1 goes to QA. And the output thrown again is A. So that completes my transition table for milli machine. Let's go ahead and do some examples on it. So the example is, I say QA... 1010 one, is the input. Now QA on receiving 1, let me write the output beside it as we wrote it exactly for the Moore machine. So this box is going to show me the output. So if you observe the diagram, the same thing can be done from the transition table also. 
we are doing it from the diagram because for Moore and Milley machine, it is advisable to look into the diagrams compared to the tables. So I have QA on 1, QA on 1 goes to QB and throws output C. So it is going to go to QB, output thrown is C, what is left is 0, 1, 0. Next I have QB on 0, QB on 0 goes to QB and throws output C. So it goes to QB, throws output C, what is remaining on the tape is 1, 0. QB on 1. It is going to go to QC, it is going to go to QC and it is going to throw the output B. So we have CCB with me till now and a single zero is left with us. Lastly, we have to look for QC on zero. So QC on zero, I can see that QC on zero is going to QB and throwing output A. It is going to go to QB, throw output A. Since nothing is left on the tape, I can write an epsilon here also. Or I can simply leave it blank because it is as good as an empty string. So now you can see that I have currently landed in state QB. And if you observe the transition table for QB or also the transition diagram, you can see that QB on 0 is throwing me some different output and QB on 1 is also throwing me some different output. So since both of them are not the same, my milli machine will never throw an output in case of the final state. So my QB will remain in QB and nothing will be thrown as the output. So if you observe over here, I see that the length of the input sequence that is 1010 is n and the length of the output sequence is also n. That's a very important conclusion in case of milli machine. In milli machine, if the length of the input sequence is n, the output sequence length will also be n. Contradicting to the Moore machine which says if the length is n, output will be n plus 1. That's how they are different. So with this, we complete the working of the Milli machine. See you in the next session between the distinguish of Moore and Mooley machine. Thank you.